Hey everyone, welcome to the video. Let's go over the eight game NBA slate for today on DraftKings. It would have been nine games, but the Clippers and Lakers game did get postponed, rightfully so, so we only have eight games to deal with. And I gotta say, it's not the best eight game slate in the world. I think everyone's pretty fairly priced, not a lot of great matchups. Not, I mean, some there's some guys I'm like usually absolutely salivating over to play the night prior, but as of right now, I'm not seeing a lot, and we don't have a lot of value options either. So we're gonna ha we're gonna be pretty hard pressed for value on this slate. So might be a more of a mid-range day if we don't get any news prior to lock, but we tend to always get news that opens up some value plays. So just keep your ears and eyes open for that. But before we continue, as always, if you guys could just leave a like, and if you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button. Really helps me out. Really appreciate it. Just so follow me on Twitter at chrispinell 16 getting pretty close to 500 followers, so maybe we can hit that pretty soon. I uh, also have Patreon exclusive content as well. So if you like my preview of my NBA spreadsheet that I'm showing you guys right now, you can get access to the entire thing and my projections that update all the way up until lock. And you also get my core plays, my cheat sheets, and my Discord chat and defense versus position chart. You can bug me as much as you want in the Discord chat. I will talk to you all day. And yeah, again, like we know how hectic news can get prior to lock, so I do have my projections running the entire day, so you will get access to my most up-to-date information, and I do all my updates all the way up until and through lock, because I know you guys know how hectic NBA can get, and one little piece of news can change an entire slate. So I think it's pretty important to have up-to-the-date news, and and we also have NASCAR coming up soon, which you guys I've been I've been pretty much repeating it, but I like to, I'm going to just keep saying it just because the season's starting soon, and I probably get new viewers every single day. I do love NASCAR DFS. I mean, not a lot of people do it, so I think we actually have a pretty good edge on the industry as a whole because as a whole I should say because not a lot of people know what they're doing when it comes to NASCAR DFS, and I absolutely love it. It's what I started doing here on YouTube back when I had like six five, six subscribers, whatever. So NASCAR videos will be starting in February, so come check that out. Also have my projections, my data sheet, all that good stuff. I'm gonna be doing articles for NASCAR as well. And then we got MLB coming up later in the spring. So we got a lot of things to be excited about. We'll have NBA going as well, so we'll have three sports. Looking forward to it. So if you wanna sign up on Patreon to get access to all my stuff, links on the description below. And without further ado, let's get into today's slate. If you hear some jingling, my dog is on my lap for this video, so hopefully it brings up some good luck for this slate. Anyway, uh, up top, we have Giannis. He comes in at 12,100, and this is a dream matchup versus the Wizards here. I mean, you can't really ask for a much better matchup versus Washington. They are one of the worst defensive teams in the NBA. If we head over to the DVP chart, they rank third worst overall, and then versus power forwards, they rank 24th, and then small forwards 24th. They pretty much suck in all aspects on defense, and they also both well, teams also play pretty darn fast. If we head over to our pace column, uh, wrong spreadsheet here let me move this over so i can you know keep doing that but as you can see the milwaukee bucks play at the fastest pace of play in the entire nba and the wizards are in this or seventh fastest in the nba so both teams are top 10 in pace of play so it should be a track meet and i will say the wizards are like i said they're a terrible defensive team milwaukee much better on the defensive side of the ball and they also have 128 implied team total that's one of the highest i can remember all season it actually might be the highest in a 240 total so a lot of points are going to be scored in this game now i will say the only concern i have with the honest and this is always the same concern i have with the honest every single time is there is blowout potential here we have they are 16 point favorites that's pretty massive and a lot of times i mean if Giannis ends up getting like 22 to 24 minutes I, would you be surprised i would not if he happens to get 60 points in those 24 minutes, would you be surprised? I would not. So it could still work out, but if he only gets like less than 25 minutes, he's probably not going to be that good of a play just because he's not going to hit his ceiling. Now, I mean, if he plays 30 plus minutes, he's got 80 point upside in this matchup versus Washington. But really, the only scenario I could see that working out is if Bradley Beal happens to go off. So if you are playing Giannis, it would probably make sense to pair him up with Bradley Beal, hoping Bradley Beal goes off and keeping this game close so they can both hit their potentials because this could very easily be a blowout because we know the Bucks blow out good teams and Washington is not a good team. As you can see, 16-point favorites, that's massive. So that is the downside. But if you just look from a number standpoint, I don't like to project blowouts. But with the Bucks, I mean... I'd be pretty shocked if Giannis gets a lot of run in this game, in the fourth quarter, I should say, but I'm hoping he does because this is a smash spot. He's only averaging 30 minutes per game, but you know I've seen multiple times where he only gets like 22 to 24 minutes and he still gets 60 fantasy points. That's because he's so, so elite on a point-per-minute basis. He's at 1.88 points per minute on the season, which leads the entire NBA. And he also has a 37.8% usage rate as well, which is one of the highest marks in the, N well, not in the NFL, in the NBA. So Giannis, you can certainly look his way. He's on three days of rest, which is nice. 
again, the minutes are going to be an issue. I don't. I could very easily see him. I could very easily see him getting less than 30 minutes in this game. But just know the risk with the blowout potential. And if you're playing Giannis, it probably makes sense to pair him up with Bradley Beal. Just hoping the game stays a little bit close. And then right below him, we got Luca, who might be a more safer option. He gets a pretty good matchup here versus Phoenix. Uh, Decent pace up spot as well. They, the Mavericks are 19th in pace of play, while the Phoenix Suns are 10th in pace of play. So, nice little pace up spot as well. And it's only a seven point spread in this game, so I don't think their blowouts very likely here. And the Mavs have 117.25 implied team total, which is pretty good. And we know Luca; he's one of the best players in the NBA for fantasy purposes. He's at 1.7 points per minute. He's got over a 37% usage rate, and it's also a pretty good matchup versus Phoenix. They rank 20th versus point guards, 24th versus shooting guards, 21st versus small forwards. So pretty good matchup overall. Luka Doncic is obviously going to be, if he gets full minutes, he's got 60, 70 point upside, if not more. So certainly like looking his way. I know he didn't have the greatest game last night. I think he only scored 54 fantasy points. But love the spot here. It's a nice pace-up spot. Luka definitely on my radar. Might be a little bit safer of a play than Giannis just because I think the game stays a little bit closer. And he could easily hit He could. I think he's more likely to hit his ceiling than Giannis would be just because of that blow, blowout risk in Milwaukee. Where's the game? In, where's this game at? Yeah, it's in Milwaukee. So that's even kind of worse for blowout potential because I could very easily see that getting out of hand. But dropping down to Nikola Jokic here, about $2,000. He comes in at 10200 and he gets a very good spot here versus Memphis, and we only have a one-and-a-half point spread, so we probably don't have to worry about a blow here, which is nice because, um, I mean, I just hate paying 12100 for someone that could easily get a blowout, and, you know, then you're sitting there wishing your guy was playing in the fourth quarter and he doesn't end up playing in the fourth quarter. But Jokic, he comes in at 10200 Big pace-up spot here for the Nuggets. They are the 28th-ranked team in pace of play, which is extremely slow. That's third slowest. And they're going to be playing Memphis, who's eighth in pace of play. So big pace-up spot here. And on the season, Jokic has a triple-double upside every single night. And I believe he just is coming off a triple-double versus the Houston Rockets. And on the season, 1.4 points per minute, 26.5% usage rate. You could certainly look his way. Love the matchup versus Memphis. They're one of the worst defensive teams in the NBA. As you can see, they rank 1, 2, 3. Uh, fifth worst just overall, and they rank 25th versus center. So I do think Jokic is in a very good spot, and he's a lot more affordable than Don than Doncic and Giannis as well. And Devin Booker. So I didn't originally put Devin Booker on my spreadsheet here, but Ricky Rubio is questionable, and if he happens to miss, I wrote my notes down on my phone. So let me just pull that up. So if Rookie Rubio happens to be out for this game. Devin Booker has a 33% usage rate and 1.26 points per minute. That's pretty darn good. Now, I will say 9,100 is a little bit much, but he has been in good form recently. He's been putting up multiple 50-point games, every not every single night, but quite often he's been doing so. And like I said, the uh, Phoenix Suns, they play pretty fast. They're going to have to rely on Devin Booker. If Ricky Rubio is out, he's going to be the, pretty much the offense here, him and DeAndre Ayton. Obviously, Kelly Oubre is there too, but definitely going to have to shoulder the load here. Only a GPP play for me because I do not like playing Devin Booker most nights, especially above 9K. I mean, I'll play him in the low 8K range occasionally, but 9100 9, is pushing it for me, even if Ricky Rubio is out. But we know the guy's got upside. He can get hot. So if you're playing Luka, you can always run it back with Devin Booker. That's a very pricey run back, but it's got upside for sure. And as for the matchup versus Dallas, that's not great, but... Again, this is only if Ricky Rubio is out, so make sure you keep your eyes out for that injury news. Uh, Bradley Beal, 8,300. So I kind of touched on him a little bit ago. I wouldn't say he's a lock just because, again, this game can get out of hand, but 8,300 is still a little bit too cheap for Bradley Beal. I mean, I think he should honestly be priced near 9K. He's been great the past few games. I believe he has three straight 50-point outings in a row, if I remember correctly. Uh, but, yeah, Bradley Beal, it's going to be a nice-paced game. I mean, this should be a track meet. It's a 240 total. They still have 112 implied team total, which is not that bad. Only problem is there's 16-point dogs on the road in Milwaukee, which, again, I could see this game getting a little bit out of hand here. And uh, But should be a track meet. Like I said, Milwaukee is first in pace of play this season, and Washington is seventh. And on the year, he's at 1.28 points per minute with a 32.6% usage rate. And he's still coming back from injury, so he's been getting a little bit less minutes than usual, like, Earlier before that, he's getting like near 40 minutes a game. Now he's seeing around 30, 33 to 35 minutes, which is still fine because Bradley Beal's 8,300, so you're getting still a little bit of a price discount. Now the matchup versus Milwaukee, not that great whatsoever. They're one of the best defensive teams in the NBA. 
And I believe they also rank fourth versus shooting guards. Yeah, fourth versus shooting guards. So that's all not great. And seventh versus small forwards. So the matchup's not great, but we've seen Bradley Beal excel in bad, in bad matchups before. I know he had a good game versus uh, Philly earlier in the season. He just did fine versus Miami, which is a tough matchup versus Jimmy Butler. So Bradley Beal, he makes sense if you're playing Giannis just to run it back. And hopefully you'll be able to afford them. With, hopefully we get some value options later in the day. But Bradley Beal, he's certainly on my radar. Uh, let's see, right below him, we got Pascal Siakam. So he kind of broke out of his slump in the last game. He had over 50 fantasy points, absolutely crushed. Can't remember who exactly they played on us. I want to say it was the 76ers, but that doesn't sound right. I can't remember, but he absolutely crushed. I mean, he had a great game, and he also played 37 minutes in that game, which was nice to see his minutes come back up. And he gets a great matchup versus Atlanta, and they have a 233 over-under in this game and 122.5 implied team total. But again, there is blowout risk here. They are 12-point favorites at home, which, again, it's kind of like the Milwaukee situation. This game could get out of hand, but I don't like projecting blowouts. So if this game does stay close and he gets near 40 minutes again, I have a hard time not seeing him pay off his price tag at 8K versus Atlanta, one of the worst defensive teams in the NBA. And it's going to be a pace-up spot here. Uh, the Raptors are 11th in pace of play, which is not that bad, but Atlanta is 5th in pace of play, and they're the worst defensive team in the NBA. As you can see, they're all the way up top here, ranking 29th versus power forwards and 24th versus centers. So this is an elite matchup for Pascal Siaco, and the price tag's not that bad either. On the season, he's at 1.2 points per minute with a near 30% usage rate, so we can certainly look his way in all formats. Uh, Drew Holiday, it's pretty much just me playing guards versus Cleveland, and it really sucked that, Drew, that Derek Rose was out for this game last night. Ended up getting rolled out a little bit right before lock, and which sucked because I had my lineup ready. I had Derek Rose ready to go. Thought he was going to be a little bit lower owned. And my dog's growling, so I should probably see what he wants. So he's not growling the whole video. I was sitting on his chewy, so I guess I, I deserve to be growled at. I mean, that's obviously a horrible offense. So, all right. Anyway, uh, Drew Holiday, he goes. He's going up against Cleveland. I think I already mentioned that. And I was sad about Derrick Rose being rolled out because I was ready to go. So unfortunately, I played Bruce Brown. That did not work out too well in my lineup. My original lineup with Derrick Rose in. Just assuming Derrick Rose would have got 40 plus points, it would have been looking pretty darn good, but I had to make some unfortunate pivots and it did not work out. I actually missed the cash line tonight by, I think, 0.75, which it sucked because I had Bojan and I was like way, I was like way back in the cash line. I was like, well, I'm dead. And then I'm walking at Walmart like at 11.30, pulled out my phone just to see how bad the damage was. I see I'm right on the line and I'm like, what the hell? So I turn on the NBA app and I'm waiting for, you know, Bojan to get me like, just hit a two-pointer and puts me in the cash line. Didn't get there. It sucked. Uh, Austin Rivers got a rebound at the end to make it even closer, which kind of more salt in the wound there, but that sucked. But anyway, we're talking about Drew Holiday. I'm not sure what – I'm not even sure. I don't even remember why I started talking about that. But Drew Holiday, he gets a good matchup versus Cleveland. They're one of the worst defensive teams in the NBA. Guards kill them every single night. If you just look at the DVP chart – they're the second worst defensive team in the NBA, and they rank 28th versus point guards and 30th versus shooting guards. If you're a guard versus Cleveland, you pretty much eat every single night. That's just what you do, and that's why I was really wishing Derrick Rose ended up playing because I had to play those scrub Bruce Brown. did not work out. But uh, obviously he's going to see a, little, a bit of a hit here with Zion in the lineup. We saw Brandon Ingram get – I mean, if Zion didn't exist, Brandon Ingram would be one of the better plays on this slate, but he has definitely taken a back seat with Zion on the court. And Drew Holiday, he's still been actually fine the past two games. Now his ceiling is capped with, uh, you know, Williamson on the court. But, you know, the matchup's just so good. He's going to play all the minutes he can handle, close to 40 minutes. And they play fast. The Cleveland does not play fast, but New Orleans will push the pace here. They're at the second pa fastest pace of play fastest pace of play team in the NBA. He's at 1.12 points per minute. He's got a 25% usage rate on the season. I love. I just like the matchup versus Cleveland, and they have a 120, 120.25 implied team total, which is pretty darn high. 7.5 point spread, so hopefully this game can stay close, and certainly have interest in Drew Holiday. Guards just eat versus Cleveland. That's just what happens. Uh, Kemba Walker, you guys know I do not have good luck with Kemba Walker. Now, I did play him versus Orlando where he had 60 fantasy points. And then the next game, he actually bought out and had uh, 50. It was versus New Orleans. Different. Yeah, versus New Orleans, he had 59 fantasy points or was it 58? Either way, he had a great game and a great matchup versus New Orleans. And we know that Jason Tatum is looking pretty doubtful for this game. And with Jason Tatum off the court, I have this written down. 
Kemba's got a 33.4% usage rate and is at 1.36 points per minute. So that's actually pretty darn good, and he's still below 8K. Now, the matchup versus Miami is not a good one, and it's also a slower pace matchup as both teams are 17th in pace of play. So kind of a slow matchup here, and there's no total out yet. But the numbers are very strong with Kemba off the court, and it wasn't a good matchup versus Orlando, and he still kind of balled out. So not going to he did ball out. So we can certainly look Kemba's way with Jason Tatum off the court. Uh, Kevin Love, if you just want exposure to this game, I get it. Uh, he actually started out the game really hot last night. I believe he had six or seven threes, if I remember. I think he had six threes in the first half because he had 20 points. He had the two, and then the rest were three-pointers. So, yeah, he crushed early, and then the Cavs got absolutely run off. No, the Cavs didn't get run off the court. The, uh, not the Tigers. The Pistons got ran off the court, and Kevin Love didn't get a full run. But like the spot here versus New Orleans, one of the worst defensive teams in the NBA, also a big pace-up spot. And if Kevin Love's hitting his threes like he was last night, I think we're in pretty, for a pretty good outing on the season. He's at 1.15 points per minute, 23.6% 23 usage rate. If we head over to our DVP chart, uh, New Orleans does rank 22nd versus power forward, so this is a pretty good spot here, so we get certain to look Kevin Love's way. Uh, Tobias Harris, so I wasn't going to put him here, but just because Joel Embiid's looking like he's going to end up being back, but if he's not back, and we also have Josh Richardson out, Tobias Harris would be a pretty good play. He's had two straight 40-point games in a row, and with both of those guys off the court, just this is assuming Embiid's off the court, He's got a 27% usage rate and is at 1.2 points per minute, which is pretty darn good. We'll see all the minutes he can handle if you know they're both out. So Tobias Harris would be a pretty good play. Good matchup versus Golden State. We know that uh, they rank they're the fourth worst defensive team in the NBA, and they also rank 28th versus small forward. So certainly look his way. Great matchup versus Golden State. Uh, Kyle Lowry, he gets an elite matchup versus Atlanta. Now, he has not been playing that well recently, but 7,200. You're getting to a price point where I do have interest still. He's got 122 point implied team total. And I already went over the matchup. Or I mean the pace. I mean it's going to be a little bit of a pace up spot here. They're one of the worst defensive teams in the NBA. They rank 18th versus point guards. I mean, I mean it's not as bad as they are versus every other position, but it's still not that great. You know, Trey Young's not a good defender whatsoever. So you can certainly look Kyle Lowry's way on the season. He's at 1.08 points per minute. We know the guy's going to play huge minutes. He's got a 23% usage rate. Like the matchup, only concern here would be that they're 12 point favorites at home. Uh, Gordon Hayward, same thing with Kemba Walker. Jason Tatum being out, he gets a bump. He's at 1.05 points per minute with a 23% usage rate with him off the court, so you could look his way. Just don't like the matchup. Uh, Chris Middleton, again, you got this slate's really confusing because a lot of the great, a lot of the good plays are all in double digit uh, point spreads in their favor at home. So it's concerning that they're not going to get a full run here. So, but. Assuming they get full run, uh, Chris Middleton, I got him for about 30 minutes here. Maybe he sees a little bit more if the game's close, which yeah, I don't really see if it would be close. But 7K, not that bad. I like the matchup here versus Washington. 128 implied team total. A lot of points are going to be scored here. Uh, Milwaukee plays fast. Washington plays fast. It's a great matchup. Uh, Washington ranks 24th versus small forwards. The matchup's good. They also rank uh, 22nd versus shooting guards. So Chris Middleton should be a pretty good play here on the season. He's at 1.23 points per minute, which is very, very good. 25% usage rate. So assuming he gets 30 minutes, I mean, I think he's a fine play versus Washington. Definitely want exposure to the Bucks here. Al Horford, assuming Joel Embiid's going to be out, he might be back. But if we're assuming Joel Embiid is out, obviously if he's back, we can't play these guys. But Al Horford, 6,800, 1.15 points per minute, 21% usage rate, great matchup versus Golden State. Billy Colley Stein was actually one of their better defenders, and obviously he's not there anymore, so it just makes it even easier for Al Horford. They're already mid-pack versus centers. I expect that to drop a little bit later in the season. So Horford, he'd be fine at 6,800 if MB happens to be out. Uh, Will Barton, this is just getting mat uh, not matchup, getting exposure versus Memphis, one of the worst defensive teams in the NBA. Again, big pace up spot for for the Nuggets here, and he's been about a point per minute player on this season, only a 19% usage rate, however. But Will Barton, you know, I have interest, so he's fine if you just want to get exposure versus Memphis. And obviously Jamal Murray being out also helps as well. Actually, he's still out, right? I'll have to double check that really quick. Yes, he's still out. I just checked, so we're good on that that department. Uh, but right below him, Colin Sexton, 6,500. So he's actually been playing very, very well recently, and I love the matchup versus New Orleans. You you want point guards versus New Orleans. They get crushed there. We just saw it with uh, Kemba Walker recently. 
And, you know, I don't love playing Colin Sexton, but this game should be pretty solid for fantasy. We have two pretty bad defenses facing off, and we also get a big pace up south for Cleveland versus New Orleans. But if we have head over to the DVP chart, New Orleans, they rank dead last versus point guards. A big green 30 right there. So this is the best matchup you can ask for for a point guard. And Sexton, he has been playing well. He's got 40, he's got 40 point upside here. And if we look on the season, he's at 0.9 points per minute, but he's been playing a little bit better than that recently. 27% usage rate, so got to have some interest in Colin Sexton. Uh, Jalen Brown, he's cheap at 6,400, so he's probably going to grade out as a decent point per dollar option with Jason Tatum off the court. Now, I will say the numbers with Jason Tatum off the court aren't that encouraging. He's only at 0.92 points per minute and a 26% usage rate, but I do like the price. Now, the matchup versus Miami is not great, but... I think he's fine. That's how I'm going out of my way to put in my lineups, but he should get 35 plus minutes here in a competitive game. And, you know, he's fine. You know, on the season, just in general, he's at uh, 1.03 points per minute. So I really wouldn't expect his numbers to really drop with Jason Tatum being off the court. I think that number might be a little bit noisy. So I think J Jalen Brown's fine. Yeah, I think he's a safe bet for over 30 fantasy points. Uh, Derek Favors, just a good matchup versus Cleveland. They get eaten all. They get. You know, eating alive in all aspects on defense, especially down low. Uh, Derek Favors, 6,100, and he's actually pretty good on a point per minute basis. 1.15 points per minute, and like I said, Cleveland, they rank 21st versus centers, 19th versus power forwards. Matchup's great. You can certainly look Derek Favors' way. If he gets close to 30 minutes, I mean, he should be able to get over 30 fantasy points. Uh, Marcus Smart, again, with Jason Tatum being out, you know, he's going to see probably 35 plus minutes he played 36 minutes in the last game the guy's got upside i just still can't forget to get that game out of my mind where he shot the ball 22 times from deep had 11 threes of course i didn't play him that game but that's just how it goes sometimes but uh with uh J jalen uh jason tatum off the court marcus smart's about point per minute guy with over about a 20 percent usage rate so you can certainly look his way at 5800 it's not a bad price tag matchup's not great versus miami though i will say that uh, Tristan Thompson just staying in this Cleveland New Orleans game. Everyone's pretty fairly priced in this game, and Tristan Thompson does have upside. He actually had a pretty okay game versus um, in Detroit last night when he was actually in the game. Got him projected for about 30 minutes here, and on the season he's been about a point per minute guy, 0 0.9 points per minute. And New Orleans, one of the worst defensive teams in the NBA, like I said, big pace up spot. They rank 23rd versus centers. Should be a lot of rebounds to go around. Everyone, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of missed shots here, so. Tristan Thompson, certainly on my radar, like the spot versus New Orleans. Like I said, big pace up spot. On the same team, Darius Garland. Now, he has not been playing well recently the past two games. But before that, he's pretty much a safe bet for about 20 points, if not more. And his price is dropping, but it's a great matchup versus New Orleans as a guard. They're one of the worst teams in the league versus guards. It's a pace up spot. The guy's not afraid to shoot the ball, put some shots up. Now, the problem is he usually doesn't make them make it a lot, but... You know, if he happens to get hot from deep, he's going to play close to 35 minutes in this game. Darius Garland's fine versus New Orleans. Big pace up spot. My dog's barking upstairs. Hopefully no one's trying to break in. That'd be unfortunate. <laughs> All right. Hopefully, I don't know if you guys can hear him that loud. I might have to pause. I only got three more players. So hopefully you don't have to, but I'll pause. All right. He's back in my lap, so hopefully we don't have any more interruptions. But at this point on this slate, we're getting a little bit scarce for options. And I really didn't want to put anyone else below Darius Garland besides Akobo, who we'll talk about. But I threw in Thomas Bryant OG just because, you know, we're probably going to need just a couple guys in the 4K range. And I don't like these guys really that much. But, again, we do not have a lot of value options on this slate as of right now. But Thomas Bryant, you know, he's still working his way back from injury. I only got him projected for about 21 and a half minutes here. I think that's a pretty safe projection. And I want exposure to this game, 240 total. Now, the problem is, again, blowout risk. So maybe he doesn't get close to 21 minutes. Maybe he's only going to get, like, 18 to 20. But, you know, if he can get 20-plus minutes here, he's over a point-per-minute guy. You know, on the season, he's at uh, 1.05 points per minute, which is not that bad. He's averaging 25 on the season, but, you know, he's still working his way back from injury. So he should be, able to, he should be getting less than that. Now, it's actually an okay spot as the center versus Milwaukee. As you can see, they're a pretty solid defensive team. Highlighting in the blue here, if you're just looking around for where Milwaukee is, just look for the blue box. Uh, they actually rank 16 versus point guards, so that's not that bad. And they rank 15th versus center, so actually their two softer spots are versus point guards and versus centers. Not saying it's a great matchup, but it's one of their softer spots. So Thomas Bryant... I think he can get there. I think he can get you over 20 fantasy points, which at 4,100, you're not going to be 
I think you're going to be pretty happy with that because there's not a lot of value options in this slate as of right now. Then you got OG here. He should get close to 30 minutes. I don't think he's going to get quite get there, but 25 to 28 minutes, I think, is definitely on the cards. He's only 4K, and he's only at 0.81 points per on the season, but he gets that elite matchup versus Atlanta, who is dead last versus small forwards and 29th versus power forwards, 29th versus shooting guards. So it's a great matchup for OG here. I think he could trip his fallen weight into like 18 plus points. And, you know, you'll take it at 4K. I don't think it's the worst play in the world. And then you got Okobo here at 3,100. So he could potentially be our salary relief guy. So if Ricky Rubio happens to be out, the last game that Rubio was out, uh, he happened to play 27 minutes, if I remember correctly. And I think he got close to 20 fantasy points, if I remember. But with uh, Ricky Rubio off the court this season, Okobo is at 0.86 points per minute with a close to a 20% usage rate. So 0.86 points per minute. If we can get close to 30 minutes, I would take it at 3,100 because we do not have a lot of value options on the slate. So Okobo would definitely be a solid option. And that's pretty much going to be it for our rundown of these players. Now, I do want to talk about this sponsor, OverlayDFS.com, really quick. So if you've been watching my videos recently, you already know what this is. But if you're new to the channel, this is OverlayDFS.com. They were kindly enough to sponsor this show. They've reached out to me, and you know they're pretty good people, and I do enjoy playing on their website. I would not recommend this website to you guys if I didn't play there myself. As you can see, I came in sixth place tonight. And the way this works is this is a pick 'em based website. It's a very, you know, it's very user friendly. Cash, it's like it's pretty friendly for the casual DFS player. You're not going to see any sharks here. There's no salary cap restrictions. You pretty much just pick whoever you think is going to score more points in that matchup. So if you thought Andre Drummond was going to outscore Zach Levine tonight, you picked Andre Drummond. If you thought Bruce Brown was going to outscore Tim Hardaway, which luckily he outscored Tim Hardaway, you pick Bruce Brown. If you thought Thad Young was going to outscore Derek White, which I thought was one of the easier plays on the slate, you pick Thad Young. It's as simple as it sounds. There's no salary cap restrictions. You just Whoever you think scores more fantasy points, you pick them. I use my projections for this, so if you want help, you can check out my uh, projections and link available in the description below. But this is a very fun website. This was a $22 double deuce contest, and the way this works is if you're in the top 10% of the entire contest, you happen to win 9 extra money. And this is $22 do, double deuce, and I finished 6, which happened to be the very tail end of the top 10%. So I won 9 extra money. This is a $180 payout. And they're a legit website. Whenever I win, they pay me out in less than 24 hours. Like I'm, I just withdrawed probably at, what, 12.30 a.m. This is 1 a.m. right now. And it'll probably be my bank account by like 3 or 4 p.m. tomorrow. They pay out quick. It's a legit website. They got some good people over there. No scams or anything. It's you know, a legit website. You don't have anything to worry about. And there's no promo code or anything or a special link you have to click. Just check it out, overlightdfs.com. It's a very fun website to supplement with your DraftKings that you play every single night. That's exactly what I do. It just adds a little bit more spice to the night. So check it out, overlaydfs.com. Very fun website to play on. And also, if you happen to go 12 and own your picks, you can win the probably going to be like $7,500 tomorrow. It's been going up. I, it was 5 k a couple weeks ago. So 12 and 0 record will get you over a $7,000 jackpot that'll go right to your your you know your balance. So you can withdraw, do whatever you want with it. A guy was close tonight, RDRFN 4LF. I'm not sure the exact Raider fan for life maybe. Maybe. I don't know. He happened to go 11 1 on his picks. If he would have got one more pick right, he would have gotten that $7,000 jackpot. So I'm sure he's probably kicking himself. I can't remember exactly who he picked, but I think it was I think it was uh, Darius Garland over uh, Osman, and Osman had been out score him, so that kind of sucks for him. But that just means the jackpot's going to be going <laughs> going up uh, for uh, tomorrow's slate. So check it out, overlaydfs.com. That's going to be it for this video, guys. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button, leave a like on the video, and I'll be back for, I'll be back for more tomorrow. See you in the next video.